You're listening to the Stock Market Options Trading Podcast, a podcast helping retail traders like yourself get better results. If you enjoy listening to cutting edge options research and trading strategies that help you make consistent gains in the stock market, be sure to subscribe now so you don't miss an episode. Now, here's your host, Jay Eric O'Rourke. Welcome back to the Stock Market Options Trading Podcast. This is episode 18 and my name is Eric. And in this episode, I'm gonna discuss my newly introduced core portfolio for trading the major asset classes of stocks, bonds, gold, volatility, Bitcoin, and cash. We're gonna cover the individual tickers and the strategies that make up this portfolio for trading both ETFs and options. And the overarching idea here is that I put together a small basket of somewhat uncorrelated assets that I can trade to make consistent gains each and every year. But before we get started, you need to know that I am not a financial advisor of any kind and hold no registrations. I'm just an independent retail trader with a knack for research and trading what works in the stock market. But nothing in this episode or on this podcast or any of my channels that includes YouTube, Patreon, none of that should be considered financial advice of any kind. Now, before before we dive into the core portfolio for trading ETFs and options on the major asset classes, I've got an article over on my Patreon page that has all of this info. So if you wanna refer back to the core portfolio or any of the tickers or the strategies, I created a short link for you to try to remember. It's optionstrading.help slash core. That's options with an S, all one word, optionstrading.help forward slash core. And that's gonna take you to my Patreon page, which is where I host all of my premium content and research. And if you're interested, you can also learn how to get trade notifications for the core portfolio that we're about to discuss while you're over there, if you wanna trade with me and a few hundred other independent traders. Now, if you're already on my email list, you already know this, but the price of the trade alerts is gonna go up in January. So if after listening, you're interested in trading the core portfolio with me, be sure to sign up up over on Patreon so you can lock in that 2020 monthly rate. Again, the direct link to get over there is optionstrading.help forward slash core. So let's start with some high level overview stuff about the core portfolio. One of the things I tried to factor in with it is trade frequency. So you guys have seen or heard some of my strategies uh, about you know entry based on time and a lot of them tend to be to the to the bullish side, and this is great when the market's in a bull run, but when the market starts to pull back and let's say those moving averages cross down and, and maybe you, know, you don't wanna take a trade or something, you're not gonna have anything to do with any sort of extended pullback, anything that's real uh, you know, back tested and proven. So one of the things I tried to do with this portfolio is to make sure that we're getting a steady flow of trades and we're going to talk about how the portfolio sort of achieves that here in a minute. But I wanted to just, you know, kind of throw that in there. That that's one of the things that I thought about when I put together all of these strategies. Now, when the market does go up and uh, you are, let's say you are selling puts or selling, you know, put credit spreads or, or whatever it is you're doing and you're doing well to the bull side because it's easier. I'll, I'll stop short of saying that that it's easy, but it's easier when, when the market's moving up. A lot of times you're going to be looking for short trades and you tend to take short or hedging trades. And a lot of those times those just lose money, right? So I know for a long, for the longest time, iron condors were really, really difficult because the short the the short call side was always getting tested and you'd have to roll up and it was just you know it was very um you know very frustrating so that's another thing i tried to factor into the portfolio is better you know i don't i, I want to stop short of using the word timing but better timing of when to get short doesn't mean you're going to you know have all winners in the bull market you're still going to have those losers when the market does pull back, but then you're gonna have those short style trades, and I'm using a, a, a general term short here, but you're gonna have those types of trades in the portfolio that's gonna help you when the market does get volatile or if there's some money shifting around between the asset classes. And remember, we're trading multiple asset classes here. So there's two other ideas here of the core portfolio 
that you really need to understand if you, you know, if you want to trade this or if you're interested in something like this. And a lot of times these are, you know, kind of a belief or a premise and, and some, you know, I, I decided to throw this in because I think it's important to understand why the, the, the trades that we're about to talk about, why these trades work together. And if you don't believe in these two points I'm about to discuss, then the, por the core portfolio may not work for you because you may have a different belief about what you should be doing with your money and whatnot. So I want you to just kind of hear me out on this. There's two uh, premises or you know ideas here. So the first, I believe, and for this portfolio, this is based on this, that you have to look at cash or money that's just sitting in your account that's not in a position, that, that that is a position. Cash is a position and that you don't have to be in the market all the time to make money. In fact, I would argue or some would argue that the less you're in the market, the better you can do because you can be more strategic. And that's one of the advantages of retail traders like us is that we can get in and get out um, a lot easier than a hedge fund or something like that, right? So we don't have to be in. We're not a we're not a pension. We're not a you know a mutual fund that's just constantly invested and just hopes to outperform the S and P. So if the S and P is down five percent this year, then you know these other funds just hope to be down only four percent. We don't want that. We want to make money every year. So if you believe that cash is a position that you should only put your money into a position in the market where you understand what the trade is, you've seen the the research, it's been tested, all that type of stuff, you're going to do better off and it's kind of boring sometimes where you know you might be sitting in a big let's say half of your account maybe in cash and half of it's working and you may start to think that well, you know, I could be making more had I put all my money in there, but we like to you know, I like to save some of that money for the other assets that could start to perk up. So for example, if you're in stocks and various forms, and then all of a sudden volatility in bonds start to perk up and you don't have any cash, you're not gonna be able to deploy that. You're gonna have to get out of your stocks and then deploy cash. And at that point, it's, it can be too late. So I like to have cash in my account all the time. I don't have a set percentage. It's something I'm kind of working on. But what I do try to do is allocate a certain amount of cash to certain strategies. That, and we'll talk about those here in a minute. So that way, if let's say I'm allocating a certain amount of cash to bonds. Well, if we go an entire year where bonds aren't worth trading, then I'm just going to have that cash in my account and it's not going to be used, right? So that's something that, that you know, that's my take on that and, and how um, I look at cash as just waiting to be deployed to a proven high probability profit strategy. So the second thing is we're gonna trade these asset classes only to the long side. There's no shorting trades, if you will. Everything's gonna be buying. We're buying shares of something or we're trading options to the bull side. That could be bull call spreads, it could be bull put spreads, but every trade in the core portfolio is a long trade. Now, technically, even though you're going long, if you go long volatility or long bonds or long gold, when these things start to get bullish, a lot of times that's when the stock market is pulling back. So as long as you're trading long volatility, typically for the, you know, most of the time, that means that you're long stock portfolio or stock side of things is going to be pulling back. So the general idea here is that we're only trading to the long side of the different asset classes. And in theory, money's going to move around. Money could come out of stocks and go into bonds or gold or Bitcoin. So again, we're going to be trading everything to the long side. There is one exception and I'm not going to focus on that in, in this episode, but there is a short volatility um, strategy, a couple strategies that, that we look to trade, uh, but there tend to be a smaller part of the portfolio and it's, we trade them separately from the long volatility. But for the most part, we're going to be trading everything to the long side. So that means if you can buy and sell an ETF, then you'll be able to trade uh, a lot of this. And if you're able to buy bull call spreads and sell bull put spreads, then you'll be able to trade the option sides of, uh, of the house on that. All right, so let's get into it. The first asset class that we are gonna trade and we actually probably trade the most of is stocks. And most of the things we're gonna trade in the core portfolio based on stocks 
are based on the S&P 500. We do trade some QQQ2 in the same manner, but a lot of times we're gonna be trading um, S&P 500. So there's three main strategies, if you will, for the S&P 500. There's a medium term bullish trade. And by medium term, um, we're trading bull call spreads about 30 days out. And the general idea is that if the 21 EMA is above the 50, we're look the 50 SMA, we're looking to put on uh, an at the money bull call spread. Um, with a 25% gain and a 50% stop. I did some other videos based on this strategy on, I, I put on YouTube, these are free. It's uh, TLT, the Dow Jones, and I think I did the NASDAQ as well. I have a playlist if you guys wanna check that out. Um, you can also, um, you can find the link to the playlist on that article I mentioned. So again, go to optionstrading.help forward slash core, and you can get a link that, to watch these free videos that kind of explain that strategy. But that's one of the media term strategy for SPY or bull call spreads about 30 days out. We also trade a shorter term uh, bullish trade on SPX. We trade seven DTE. We trade the Wednesday trade. I did a couple podcast episodes on this. I think they're episodes seven and eight. So you can go back to uh, that those episodes to kind of listen in on that strategy. But basically we're putting on um, just under at the money spreads on Wednesdays. We try to be consistent. Sometimes there's Fed announcements and things. We, we adjust it a little bit. But again, if you go to the, the article on Patreon, uh, there'll be a link over there um, that you can get that strategy if you're interested in that. Uh, and the other one uh, we trade that's not options, we trade SSO. And SSO, I use a trend following system that I, that I sort of coined as pure alpha. And I talked about this in a previous episode called Crisis Alpha, uh, where we traded on UVXY. I have updated my, my settings, if you will, for those indicators. So if you want the updated version, um, come check me out over on Patreon, but I have some links to that there as well. But essentially, um, SSO is a two times bull ETF of, S of SPY. So if SPY is up 1%, SSO uh, tries to be up 2%. It's not perfect. Um, there is some fees in there. It's not meant to be a long-term thing. But the general idea is this, when the market is rallying and we're in a bull mode and we get a buy signal and I've been sitting in cash, when I finally deploy that cash, I'm gonna get a better return while I'm in the market. So by putting, you know, if I'm out of the market during the, uh, you know, COVID crash, my cash is just sitting there. And then when the market gets bullish again, I can just put the money back into SSO and I could get two times my return for those periods. A lot of time these trades um, are typically from one week to two weeks. Um, in length. So, you know, we have a couple of ranges there with the S&P 500. We have a seven day bull put spread, a 30 day bull call spread. Typically the bull call spread, you're out in two or three weeks. And then we have a ETF buying with leverage. It's, you know, I don't want to say it's like a call option. It's a lot easier than a call option, but it's kind of like buying, buying a call option where you get a little bit of leverage without all the Greeks that you have to worry about with SSO. And again, those trades can last a couple days to a couple weeks as well. So we definitely trade a lot of S&P 500 related items. And um, again, that's SPY, SPX, and SSO. Now we do trade the NASDAQ as well. Sometimes we'll do the QQQ bull call spread similar to the SPY bull call spread. I usually don't do both, but I'll do one or the other. And for leverage, if I decide I want to buy the NASDAQ instead of the S&P 500, instead of SSO, I will look to buy TQQQ, which is a three times bull ETF of uh, the NASDAQ. And this this thing can really make some money when the NASDAQ is roaring and leading like it's been, we can really get some good gains out of that trade. And again, we're using the pure alpha trend following system on that. So we have, a we have I don't know, five, how many is that? Five strategies, main strategies that, that we're trading stocks to the long side. And that's kind of a lot of the trades that we end up taking. The next, let's talk about bonds. Bonds are often seen as sort of a safe haven for stocks, which I actually don't fully agree with. I actually did a, a short video on this. Um, during the COVID crash, for the first part of the crash, bonds did skyrocket while the stocks pulled back, but then ultimately bonds rolled over as well. So when I when I talk about bonds, it's it's not always that bonds will be inverse to the market, 
but we try to trade them independently. And what that means is if bonds are going up, I'm trading the exact same strategies as I am on SPY. If that 21 EMA is above the 50 SMA, I'm trading that 30 day call spread. So this is where it starts to, to, to simplify your trades where you're trading almost the exact same strategy just on a different ticker. So if I have two strategies, a bull call spread on SPY and a bull call spread on, on TLT, that's the ETF that I use, it's got pretty liquid options there. When bonds do start to rally, that could mean that the S&P is pulling back and then we'll stop trading bull call spreads over there and we'll kind of flip over to TLT. But sometimes they're both rallying together and sometimes they're both pulling back together, but they're a little bit uncorrelated at times. So I like having this in there, but I think the key here is that we're trading the exact same setup with the exact same stop, exact same target. So once you get that 30 day bull call spread down, you can trade it on SPY, QQQ, TLT, DIA. Again, I got the free videos over on the article. Um, over on optionstrading.help slash core. So if you want to get those videos for the bull call spreads, I think that's uh, you know something that you would really benefit from. So that's kind of how I'm trading bonds. I was trading the some leveraged bond ETFs, but I've, I've kind of settled back into just doing the bull call spreads. Right now, as of this podcast, bonds haven't really been in favor, so we haven't been trading it. But as soon as the market maybe does start to even out or maybe maybe it pulls back in 2021 or something, bonds could perk up and we'll be ready because we have our strategy and we're just waiting on the entry. So again, next asset class, gold. Guess what? Same trade, 30-day bull call spreads. If the 21 is above the 50, then we're, take, we're gonna be trading gold bull call spreads. Same stop, same target. So again, same strategy, just on a different ticker. And the idea here is that gold is not really correlated to the market. So again, sometimes gold is gonna go with the market because it's often a currency trade where if the US dollar is falling, you're gonna see things like gold and Bitcoin go up. And we'll talk about Bitcoin here in a minute. But again, it's the, the key here, it's the same strategy. It's almost boring. We're gonna trade the same strategy across multiple asset classes. And depending on which asset class is, and I'm air quoting bullish, meaning the 21 EMA is above that 50. That's the the measure or the metric we're using for that. Then we're gonna look for trade bull call spreads on gold. And I think I got, I didn't do a video on that one, but you'll, you'll see the strategy in those um, videos on YouTube. So we're trading SPY, TLT, GLD. We're trading bull call spreads, QQQ. When that 21 EMA is above the 50 SMA, the market is, you know, considering that a bullish condition. And we're going to be looking to trade those 30 day bull call spreads. So the next asset class we're going to talk about is volatility. And we're going to sp be specifically looking at the VIX and we're going to be looking at VXX, UVXY, and we're going to be looking at SVXY. Um, I'm adding SVXY because, uh, it's going to give us some short volatility exposure and UVXY is going to give us long volatility. And basically what we're doing here is we're going to be trading that exact same pure alpha strategy that we traded on SSO and TQQQ. When we get a trend following buy signal for volatility, we'll be looking to buy one of these ETNs They're technically ETNs. The interesting part of these ETNs is that, um, they're comprised of you know, overly complex math that I'm not gonna talk about uh, with that. But in general, when volatility starts to perk up, um, we can get these trend following buy signals on UVXY and VXX. Again, I did a whole episode on UVXY on this strategy called Crisis Alpha. I wanna say it's episode two or three. So you may wanna go back and just listen to that. I've changed the settings a little bit, like as I mentioned before, but, but, but again, it's the same strategy the same trend following strategy we're trading on uh, SSO and TQQQ, the, the stocks uh, asset class, we're gonna trade that same strategy on the volatility using UVXY, VXX, or SVXY. A lot of times we end up in UVXY, but VXX and UVXY are, are very, um, I don't wanna say similar, but they're both um, uh, long volatility. Um, whereas XVXY is a short volatility product, but I've seen really good results with that as well. So, so volatility, um, we're trading 
you know, both short and to the long side using trend following um, strategies. Uh, the last asset class we're going to talk about is Bitcoin. And the way that I'm, tr you know, and I'm air quoting trading Bitcoin. And for all the, the hodlers out there, um, this is not, you know, a libertarian view on the end of the fiat currency and, and some, you know, you know, I got a little bit of that, you know, for maybe do another episode. Um, this is not actually buying Bitcoin itself. What I've tried to do, as you can kind of notice, is try to simplify uh, my strategies where I'm only trading a couple strategies basically across several asset classes. And there's no difference here with Bitcoin. I'm choosing to trade in my core portfolio, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. The ticker is GBTC. Um, I think right now it's like, I don't know, 20 bucks or something like that. Uh, GBTC, um, you know, you can look it up. It, it It's basically... Uh, got a little bit of a premium to the actual price of Bitcoin. I want to say if Bitcoin's at 20,000, it's like, you know, when I'm doing this uh, podcast, Bitcoin's at 19 something thousand. So Bitcoin's going to be 19 something plus 10 to 20%. So typically, like right now, when Bitcoin's at 19 and a half, GBTC might be at 21, $22. And there's a little bit of a relationship yet there. It's not a clean, like tick for tick Bitcoin move. There's a premium there that sometimes can move around a, a little bit. But what I like about GBTC is that it's very liquid. I, I, you know, for 20, you can do a couple hundred shares and get in and out very, very easily. The other thing I like about it is that when I'm, if I want to get in and out of it, um, I'm not having to worry about a lot of those fees from from other other brokers if you're actually trading Bitcoin itself. So, you know, it's a derivative if you want to call it that. But again, we're going to trade the exact same strategies that we do on volatility as we do on Bitcoin, as we do on stocks. We're trading an uptrend, trend following system. Uh, we're not shorting. It's called Pure Alpha. Check out the, you know, the links over on the website. But we're going to be adding Bitcoin. I think I'm actually in Bitcoin right now or GBTC. And I say Bitcoin and, you know, I know all the <laughs> all the uh, blockchain heads are going to, you know, blast me for this one. But we're trading GBTC as a long Bitcoin strategy. And we're only going to trade when the trend is up. And this is a short term trend following system um, called Pure Alpha. So those are the major asset classes. We got stocks, bonds, gold volatility and Bitcoin. And we're going to be using cash to get in and out of those trades. So we're always going to have uh, a decent amount of cash. One thing that I'm still working on, and this is something that I'll be sharing with members that I, you know, I'm trying to get better too, right? For 2021, what I'm trying to get better at is, is really the allocation of all these um, positions. A lot of times when I'm doing trades like SSO and TQQ, I'm going larger size uh, because I want that leverage. And I, and, 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 you know, my general idea or rule here is I try not to risk more than three to 5% per individual trade, but that can be tricky sometimes because if we're long, let's say we're long SSO and we got some bull call spreads on QQQ and we got bull put spreads on SPX. There's a lot of long positions. So something that I'm I'm trying to get better at and really calculating is understanding my long deltas as it as it relates to the S&P 500 um so that I can, you know, essentially keep my risk low. You know, I, you, you hear all the things that I'm trading. I'm actually relatively I feel like conservative. I know exactly what my risk is before I put that trade on. I know my max loss, my max gain, that type of stuff. So that's something I'm trying to work on. But listen, if you're interested in trading uh, the core portfolio with me and you want to get live trade alerts, come over to Patreon, come check it out. If you don't want to trade, you know, join the service. That's totally cool too. But if you want to just check out the core portfolio and a little bit more details and reminders, head on over to optionstrading.help slash core, and you can at least kind of see the strategies and you can get the free videos for the bull call spreads that I mentioned. So be sure and check that out. And real quick, if you could take two seconds and help me beat the algorithm, I'm trying to beat the podcast algorithm. And what really helps if you could leave me a review on Apple Podcasts, that helps the algorithm let people know that people like this and helps me get higher up in those uh, rankings. So I really appreciate it. You guys have a great day and we'll see you at the next episode. Okay.
Thanks for listening to the Stock Market Options Trading Podcast. To join our community of options traders, head on over to patreon.com forward slash vertical spread options trading for details. But before you go, you should know that everything discussed on this podcast and in this episode is for informational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice of any kind. 